Ooh, fish shot. Let's pick. Let's pick. Where's my net? Where's my net? <laughs> yes. Hey there, folks, and welcome to Cambo Trout Fishing. So for today's video, I'm taking you back in time a little bit. It's going to be back in late December, December 18th, I think it was. And before this trip, I had been having a tough time. <laughs> I made it on the water twice before this trip where I was almost skunked, not quite, narrowly avoided the skunk, but I was not catching what I was really trying to catch, and that was pickerel. I was losing them with the boat, I was missing them, couldn't get them, it happens, man. Sometimes just get in a slump. Luckily, with this video, I was able to pull myself out of that slump. So, as we go through it, and especially at the end, I'll go through the gear, go through the tips. I'll also showcase in this video one newest addition to my arsenal, and that is a new kayak trailer from a new producer on the market out there called Yakspedition. I'm really excited to be partnering with them and I'm very thankful they decided to partner with me as well. And over time, you're gonna see an evolution in terms of this trailer itself, future models that are coming out, and I can't wait to show them all to you. So, you'll see a quick shot of the trailer and then we'll get on the water and go fishing. If you end up enjoying the video, make sure you like, share, and subscribe, and let's get to the fishing. Keep an eye out on the channel here too for a walkthrough of the trailer, along with some other new toys that I've recently acquired. Well, here we are folks. Hopefully my audio isn't too bad for you today. Out here fishing a mill pond on Maryland's eastern shore. If you know, you know. <laughs> and out here for pickle. I am in sore need of a redemption trip. So I've narrowly avoided the skunk on my last two outings, but not in any kind of significant way either. So I'm hoping that today <laughs> will mark a change in that respect, and then I can get some respectable fish on the board for the CCA tournament, because I sorely, sorely need them. Come on. Be a pickle. You are not a pickle, sir. <laughs> You're not a pickle at all. God bless America. I am here today for pickerel. Not for largies, sir. That's a Z-Man spinnerbait with the Z-Man soft plastic. There's the bass, probably about a 15 inch or so. You look gorgeous. Beautiful coloration on her, but just not what I'm here for. Uh, I could tell from the fight, I was pretty sure it wasn't a pickerel, but man, I was hoping. I was hoping. Yeah, you little rascal. Mm -hmm. I still love you, but gosh darn it. Supposed to be a pickerel. <laughs> Ooh, fish on. Fish on. Is that another bass? No, that's a pick. That's a pick. Where's my net? Where's my net? Ah, crap. Stay on. Stay on the hook. Stay on the hook. All right. <laughs> yes. Oh. Folks, you can tell I'm a little excited. <laughs> it's the first pickle I landed in like three trips, man. Two or three? Something like that. I had another one on about this same size on my last trip, but then he got off right next to the boat. So, man, it just it feels so good just to land a pickle. And honestly, but my smallest one checked in for the CCA right now is a little mini. Like a 15 and 3 quarters or 16 or something like that. Sort of, I mean, this is not a big pickle, but boy, it's an upgrade from where I was, man. So, I will freaking take it. I just added these very nice H-rail rod holders, but I'm still playing with the positioning of them. So as you can tell, I'm getting used to the layout as I've currently set it up. But on my list is definitely a power pole so I can make this operation much more smooth. All right, you, come here. Oh, off the hook like that, huh? I'll take it. I will take it. There we are. And there is our first slime dart of the day. <laughs> oh, God. <laughs> See, I almost went back in the drink without a picture. That would have sucked. Yeah, she'll come in about 17 and a half, almost 17 and three quarters. 
<laughs> Thanks, little buddy. There she is. In you go. Choop. Oh, and I really did lose my tag that time. So let's net my tag. Gotcha. All right. Now, I'm start using my 360 to get back in position. Yep. Okay. Yeah, I'm still more or less in position. That's good. That's really good. Okay. So, to explain what I said I was going to explain about where I'm fishing. Earlier in the year, this area right here is a great big pad field. Now this time of year, the pads are more or less gone. I mean, I certainly don't see any on the surface. But what remains, oh, float down, float down, float down. Fish on, let's see what. Oh, you jerk, he got off. Darn, 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 he darn. Hopefully it's a pickerel, as if it was, he might come back and get it again. I've been interrupted a few times here by fish, but what I'm fishing is an area that is normally a pad field. Right now that pad field is gone because all the vegetation is dying off because it's just gotten too cold. But what remains is the skeletonized structure, the skeletonized root systems of that pad field. And apparently a lot of fish are keying on it. So far, I've caught a good bass off it, about 15 inches. A pickerel, right around 17 and a half. And I just had another float drop, which I think was a pickerel, based on the fight that I felt. But I will never know because I lost it. <laughs> but anyway, I just wanted to give you that tip. That even when those pad fields are gone, the root systems that remain behind during these cold, cold months, can still hold some good fish. Float down. Float down. He got off again. What the heck? This fish is an escape artist of the highest order. Fudge muffin. I'm also wearing some new gloves today. These are called glacier gloves. I'll leave a link in the description. I picked them up from Delaware Paddle Sports. And I am really, really liking them. So they essentially keep your hands warm while letting your fingers work. And they have a rubber kind of grip to them that really helps with being able to grip these fish. I've noticed it whenever I'm holding the pickerel and when I'm holding the bait fish. So, so far, I'm, I'm very impressed. Definitely liking them getting over right now towards the point of this beaver lodge. It would not surprise me at all to get a good bite off of it. Uh, float down, float down, float down, float down. Gotcha. Nice pick. I knew it. I knew that was you. Nice one, folks. That's much better than my first one. Oh, not as big as I thought, but still a decent fish. Not as big as I thought. I'm pretty sure that's the pick rule. That, oh, well, he's done. <laughs> Sorry, Minnow. <laughs> I'm pretty sure that's the pick rule that hit me and got away with it. And I, I know I always emphasize it, but if you're gonna be doing live bait fishing, especially catch and release live bait fishing, use those circle hooks, folks. You'll save so many fish out there. But yeah, I definitely thought he was way bigger than he is. <laughs> definitely did. Let's see, what do you got here? Worth taking a picture of. Very, very, very slight upgrade. Thanks, little bud. Yeah, but honestly, folks, it is just great to be out today and catching fish. Really needed a day out on the water. That wasn't so much a chore. So I'm really glad I've found it. Found it. <laughs> I'm really glad that I found this one cove area over here that is shielded from what is a pretty serious wind today. 
the wind today I think is forecasted up to around 20. So being able to find at least one area that has some wind shielding to it, not only does it make fishing easier, easier rather, it makes it so much more comfortable. So much more comfortable. Got fish on folks, she hit it right at the boat. I mean right at the boat. Another pick, number three. There we are. Now I'm not telling you that you can take your sweet time, but it is one of the good things about winter fishing that you have more time to handle these fish without them being injured or oxygen deprived. Every fish I've handled so far has swam off very strong. All right, let's see how long you are. That, that might be my biggest of the day so far. She might push 20 inches. She's certainly the thickest. Let's see if she's gonna be the longest. There she is. Give me, give me my lure, you toothy critter. There you are. Thanks, bud. Folks, my float just dropped right in front of me. And I mean right in front of me. That was freaking cool. I saw him getting nervous. There it is, fish on. Now pickle number four. Pickle number four. Come here, you. <laughs> Come here. Now, don't get me wrong. I prefer warm weather fishing. But this combination of having floats, watching them drop, and being able to cast and catch fish on the rod that you're working, that's a lot of fun, man. A lot of fun. About like a 15 incher, 14, 15. His one fin's really messed up. Not much I can do for it though. Good luck, buddy. Oops, sorry about that. <laughs> Ow! Oh, at last, a good fishing day. Hopefully, somewhere in these mix of the teener type pickerel, you can go ahead and find one in the mid-20 range. That would be freaking cool. here. I mean, I imagine it's a pickle. It's almost certainly a pickle given where I'm fishing, but yeah, I'm pretty sure it's a pick. <laughs> Come here, little guy. Come here, little guy. I'm not that little. He ain't that little. Probably about 17 inches or so. You look a little rough, buddy. Here. This minnow's about done anyway, so hopefully... You will accept this gift. Here, open up. Open up. Come on. Come on. Don't don't bite me. <laughs> Come on. Open up. I'm trying to give you a gift here. Come on. Minnow's like, no, don't do it. There you go. There you go. I think he kept it. You never know. When you release a fish like that, they're going to spit out anything that's still in their mouth, but I think he kept it. Good for him. He could use it. The other kayaker is unfortunately exactly where I was planning on going. But it's the nature of public waters, man. You got to share. Just got my first one in a while. And again on the spinner bait. Folks, it's only about 2.30, but I'm not going to lie, I can't do this much longer. <laughs> it's too cold. Too cold on my poor little digits. Now, I just moved back 
to the area I was fishing earlier where I caught a lot of my fish. And I'm hoping I can go through here and catch a few more. But I mean, regardless, like even this area, the wind direction has changed such that it doesn't have the same level of shielding that it did. So I just mean straight up. <laughs> it's not going to be safe for me to be out here much longer. But let's see what I can make of maybe the last half an hour to an hour out here. We'll see what we can do. Spinner bait. <laughs> Remember to always check that back cast area, folks. Or better yet, come up with a setup on your kayak where it won't be an issue. That's what I'll work on. Fish on. Nice bass. Very nice bass. Oh, wow. Even bigger than I thought. Jeez Louise. Look at that, will you? Holy crap. That's a nice way to end the day. Come on, man. <laughs> so you know your fight for some head shakes? Look at that. That's a nice bass. That's only Meps right there. I'm not gonna lie though, buddy. <laughs> I would have preferred that you were a pickerel weighing this much. She'll come in at 17 and a half. I'd estimate and say two and a half pushing three. Three pounds, eight ounces. Nice fish. Really nice fish. Mwah. You beaut you. Thank you. There you go. Get down there. There she goes. Man, I need a three pound pickerel. <laughs> well, folks, that pretty much rounded out the day there. As I said before, it was great to get this redemption trip in after the last few trips I had before this that were not skunks, <laughs> but not far off either. Top performers for the day, without a doubt, were the Z-Man Bullseye Spinnerbait that's paired with a four inch Z-Man Diesel Minnow. And I caught, I think, slightly more on the live bait and I got those minnows over at Angler Sports Center. I was fished those roughly between a foot to about two feet beneath that float. And then of course that last fish, that bass, came on a number four Meps Aglia. You can find links to all the gear I've been using in the description. The last tip I would pass on is just keep an eye on that weather forecast during the winter. Find those warming trends, and if you can, fish towards the end of them. If you can't, <laughs> and you still wanna get on the water, just make sure you dress warm and stay safe out there. You can have great days, but it is a more dangerous time of year. Thanks for watching, folks. If you enjoyed it, please like, share, and subscribe. And have a good one.